<laughs> That's me. All right, let's start this thing. I'm going to hit play. Go. <sighs> oh, I should probably make it so you can hear it. <clears throat> Welcome to another Woodshop Podcast with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, and Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 21 of another Woodshop Podcast. Guys, Hello. we can legally drink in the U.S., Oh, Yay. that's one. Fun fact: you know what uh, I this like? episode could drink in Europe as of 18. So oh. you know we're kind of lame. This is really good <laughs> facts you're dropping on us right now. <laughs> what's going on, boys? Mm, I don't know. What's up with you, Dan? Talk? You know what's going on with me? I've been talking to you guys for an hour and a half now. Oh, it's, this is awkward. Oh, you're gonna broke the get fourth the wall. Box. Yeah, I don't know why you did that. Now we <laughs> oh, can't have a normal right. conversation. Oh, uh, what do we do now? <laughs> hey. You know, much like last week mm-hmm. and the previous episodes before that, oh. this episode Ooh. is brought to you by Bear Hollow Supply. Yeah, Big baby. thank you to Bear Hollow Supply. Did did we? Well, I can't do that joke now. Uh, did, thank you to Bear Hollow Supply for sponsoring the show. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate them. Uh, they were our first sponsor, which is really cool of them. And that was really nice and it's greatly appreciated. So big thank you to Bear Hollow Supply. If you don't know who they are, go check out the notes for the podcast and get some information on them. They have nice cabinet hardware and woodworking supplies, and they even will deliver lumber to your house. So go check out Bear Hollow Supply. That's for free? Sweet. Will they, can I just uh, them no, you lumber? actually have to give them money for it. Oh, it's one of those that? things. I oh, know. They're one of those, <sighs> they're one of those businesses that you are know, trying to where profit, they ask, <laughs> turn a profit. Trying to like feed their crazy. families. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. That's really it's cool ridiculous. that they're doing lumber now too. Yeah. Nice. Can't beat that. Lumber yeah. to your house. It's pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. One-stop shop. Yeah. I mean, it's no Menards, but what is? <laughs> Stop talking about your Menards. Sometimes you want wine <laughs> and some cotton candy, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pete, well, what's up with you? Well, speaking of cotton candy and things being sweet, our patrons <laughs> are so sweet. They are. They are. That we, wow. we have some new patrons that signed up this week. Was as smooth bad. as... That was a Caitlyn Jenner-esque transition. <laughs> oh, God. You mean rough and televised? <laughs> Obvious and well-known. Uh, back, back on I'm track. I'm checking out. <laughs> oh, this a is the big, main show? huge Whoops. thank you to our patrons. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we do have a Patreon uh, where you can sign up for some awesome content, uh, including behind-the-scenes uh audio of our pre-show and also the video of this podcast so you can see us uh, taking lots of sips uh clearing our throat and getting up a lot to pee um because that's just riveting content (laughs) but the best part of it of it all and this is officially confirmed uh we found out this week that they do exist in fact um if you are the top level patron you will get a sticker from the one the only daniel Gilligan Dunlap. That's right. Yes. He will wow. send you a sticker. It's real? It's real. It's real. The yeah. rumors got, are true? Yeah. I got 10 foot stickers. <laughs> Massive. Ten, one foot stickers? <laughs> yep. No, I think they're yep. four inchers. Oh. Oh, weird you know. flex. Okay. So, well, that's a lie. <laughs> well, four inches, you know, and, you know, I tell my wife, no, that's 12, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's relative. Let me use the wide angle lens. <laughs> Um, I got four inch stickers I'm going to send. Yeah, but uh, shout out to uh, Sticker Beat for hooking you up. I'm finally getting you on track with your yes, life. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, big thank you to the patrons. If you guys want to see uh, what we have to offer and if you just want to support us, because uh, some of you do, and we are, like, I'm not, I'm just joking aside, we are blown away by the support. Uh, we love how great the community is and you guys are all about helping us out. And you want to see more content, and we're able to do that. We're able to provide more thanks to you because of your support. So thank you so much to our patrons. And, Mike, I do believe we have some new ones this week. We do. We actually have five this week. A huge thank you to Tim Hunter, Paul Thompson. You may know this next guy. Jason Bent, Tony Pies, and Qualys Woodworks. Thank you so very much, you guys and gals. You guys are amazing. Seriously, uh, it's really allowed us to – 
devote extra time to getting more content for this. I mean, yeah. you know, we love we love doing it, but it is it does take a lot of time. <laughs> so we just it's really good to be able to uh, to uh, make more for you for sure. So uh, and thank you. Just to, to clarify, I do know Jason Bent. I'm oh, sure. you've heard of him. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Heard. He's we good. hung out with him. We talked to him a little bit at yeah. the uh, WBC. Mm-hmm. He's a good dude. And uh, mm-hmm. yes, I agree. He's a great guy. And As I, is, I've messaged him once via chat. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> you know, we're, we're having a sleepover next weekend. Um, <laughs> so I guess with that, you know, we should break into a little segment. It's called What's on My Bench, and I'm going to throw it over to Daniel Dunlap. Daniel, Daniel Gilligan Dunlap. Daniel Gilligan Dunlap. I have to ask you one question. What? What's on your bench? <laughs> What's on my bench? I'm setting up a... Don't do it! <laughs> you don't have to do it. I have to He's got the track in. I know, but I ugh, it's just in me. You have to I know I just want to dance. It's the, soul, it's the soul of Dunlap. <laughs> <laughs> uh you guys will never believe what's on my bench, but uh still working on that walnut desk. Still. The small it's monster. One. <laughs> yeah, that real tiny one you really tiny yeah. one. <laughs> I'm putting it together with toothpicks. Um <laughs> No, uh, I'm starting to work on those bookcases that are going to be on either side of it. So that has been taking up most of my time, milling up the walnut, trying to replicate the legs that I made on the on the desk. That's been a fun adventure. Um, I Can thought I, I had you? everything. I thought I had everything set up to to repeat it, and all my, all the everything that I had in my head is wrong. So I've had to just like kind of deconstruct everything and make sure it was all right. What were you going to ask, Mike? What does your milling process look like? I'm curious, and this isn't a dig without a jointer. What does your milling process look like? I'm very con- curious. A whole lot of table saw. Yeah. So That's you just it. rip, 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 rip a million times until you get a straight yeah. edge, or what? Yeah. Rip, 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 rip. The the skip rip. Skip. skip rip. Um. <laughs> no. The my lumber yard. Does, you get gives, it. They, they do a, a good job. Edge. Yeah. 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 They do Line a great rip. job. Yeah. Cool. It, it's a super flat, good. So you're you're cutting surface. down to rough length, basically. Yes. For your milling process, and then you're laying everything out and then tightening it up, right? Yes. Okay. I'm just legitimately curious. No dig. Don't yell at me. Don't dunlap me. <laughs> <laughs> Every week um, it's a different action, too. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ink reactions. I feel like there was something the else I, I worked on, but you I can't remember what it was. Oh, did you forget? Oh, you, also, oh, you dunla- dunlap that one. <laughs> <laughs> you were on vacation, right? Yeah. You know, I, I take vacations like every week now. So yeah, it's taking well, it's a dumb lap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already tired of this joke. Yeah, oh. me too. I did as I was saying, I was like, oh, this is stupid. <laughs> no, we took our last camping trip, I think, of the summer. Yeah. Finally, yeah. kids are kids are going back to school pretty soon, so we need to uh, What's get back into that like routine. You guys this year are they distanced? Oh, or... No. Well, my wife's a teacher, and right. She gets some inside information, and it's it's looking like it's going to be a cluster F. Like shocking, right? Yep, about the same so, here. Yeah, only time will tell. Uh, yeah. They offered uh, for <clears throat> for people to do virtual, or they can go to school, but the kids all have to wear masks all day. There are some districts around us where they're doing like. If your name's your last name starts with an A through D, you're going on Monday. Mm, I've you know, heard of that. Yeah, they're doing that. Yeah, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. And my own prediction, me and my wife's prediction is, uh, I think it'll be 100% virtual by October. Mm-hmm. Is I that mean, when there's? Oh, when are they supposed to start though? Oh, August. Late August. August 14th or 15th, I think. Wow, that's early for the school. So I don't yeah. really know. Yeah, I'm just curious. I'm just curious because my son's gonna be starting school next year. Anyway, that's what's on my bench. <clears throat> Super great. Nice. What about you, Pete? Oh, I get to go next. Sure. I wasn't ready. Uh, okay. So what am know. I working on? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, well, I'm I'm got, kind of going outside of my comfort zone with a project, and I'm trying this. Pants? Uh, it's a cutting board. Um, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Can you turn the camera around real quick? I just want to check your rack. <laughs> Now it's a, uh, uh, my, my parents have this like nice little kitchen cart, but it's got a metal top. It feels very like restaurant. So we're trying to spruce <laughs> it up and we're going to make it, I'm going to put a nice little uh, top on it. 
And aside from that, I started milling up those big Douglas fir old growth beams that I have. And they are so freaking heavy. Like old growth Douglas fir is so nice. Uh, and I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's a softwood type of pine, but it's just, it's not like a regular pine. It's so crazy. It's, it, it's, but if that's old Doug dense. fir, that's probably got some heft to it and some density. It does. And it's fully dry. That's the yeah. thing. It feels like, like Three when you C's. get like, like a four by four from Home Depot, it's just like super heavy because it's just soaking wet. Right. Uh, but this is dry. And I did something reckless and I basically was looking around them and I looked for the side with the least amount of holes. And then I rolled the dice and I ran it through the joiner. Uh, cause uh, I was like, ah, it's probably not a nail on this side. <laughs> and guess what? There wasn't, I got lucky. Yeah. Oh, so I was five good. nails. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> five nails. And then my joiner shot, but it was, uh, the, the beams are just under six inches. So it barely fit on my, uh, on my joiner. And, but it's nice. It's so nice. I'm, I can't, uh, I can't wait to, uh, what I'm basically building out of them is a little, uh, joinery bench. So it's going to be roughly about two feet by two feet with a nice big face vise on it and dog holes running through the whole thing. So I can do some small joinery, a little bit of woodworking. I don't really have room for a full size workbench, uh, but I do still want to do some woodworking and the setup I have right now doesn't really work. It's basically a, like a vise with some wood on it. It's not that pretty. Um, so that's that. And uh, I actually did try something that I am definitely not good at and looking forward to learning more about and that is editing videos. And I have such a high respect for anyone that does it for a living because as I was shooting my video of the uh, the barn bar that we built, uh, you can see how much like throughout the day I cared less and less about the shot because everything was like a tight, like 30 second shot of what I would need. And then throughout the day, it just turned into like 10, 15, 20, 30 minute clips of just like me doing stuff. And I was like, I'll sort it later. Well, guess what? It's later and I hate it <laughs> so much. So present respect, Pete is, respect to you guys for uh, for editing. Present videos. Pete is mad at past Pete. What a jerk. <laughs> what a jerk. Uh, but yeah, so I'm hoping to I was hoping to get that video out today. It's going to be a little rough, but this weekend is looking pretty good. So I hope to get my first video What's out on today? my YouTubes. Today is What's Friday. Today? Friday. It is Saturday now, I guess, over here. So I'm looking to drop it today, Saturday, um, because it is after midnight. But yeah, I'm very, very excited to do that because uh, I'm starting oh, to slowly to get it, in the man. flow. Yeah, it's going to be trash, hot trash. But, uh, you know, first video, who cares? <laughs> so, so is I need Mike, it to be... There, it happens, dude. You just need to get it out. No, Mike, you're kind of like super annoying because your first video was fire. And then no, like, everything else has been fire. Pete, it's not. My first like five videos, the videos, the audio is out of sync and stuff. It's not good. It just happens. <laughs> Don't worry about it, dude. Just get it out and you'll get better. I'm just trying to get to your level, you know? <laughs> dude, you're never going to get there. So don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. No, well, just, you just need to. Speaking of being humble, hey Mike, what's on your bench? <laughs> oh, this isn't about me being rad. It's about deficiencies on your. Um, no, no. It's seriously, you you need to get the video out. You're gonna, it's gonna look great, man, dude. I, I can't wait for you to to see your video. I can't wait for you to do YouTube. I'm excited for you to do YouTube. You know I am. The YouTube, I know, and I'm, yeah, and I wanna. It's just I'm having some difficulty with it. Uh, you're, you're afraid to fail. Yes. It's almost easier to not, and this is, so we've gotten this question before and I'm in the same boat as a lot of people because I don't do YouTube content. And in reality is it's almost easier to not do it because you're so afraid of doing poorly. You're going to do poorly. Your first video is going to bomb hard, dude. And I'm gonna, I just have to get over that. So I'm just going to cry tonight after the podcast and it's fine. I'm going to get over it. Mike, okay. what's on your bench? Do the next one. Well, I put out a YouTube video today. And it was really oh, easy. So, way to make no, you check. feel bad. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I put out a YouTube video today. Um, it was this what, clamp 8,000 8, 8, views? 9,000 views? As it's of... at uh, 9,200 views right now as of... Uh, exact number. Of it. Um, no big deal. No, actually, that it's really... it's That's much bigger than I'm used to getting for video video views. Uh, and I'm very excited about it. Um, but uh, that's what I was working on this week was getting that wrapped up. That is a video I did with Bessie. And um, so the plans are out for that. Um, the plans are available uh, because of Bessie, so uh, that's out. And but this week, it's been not like an incredibly joy enjoyable week. It's been kind of a rough week actually this week for me. I've had a few things going on that I don't really want to talk about. But um, on my bench, I'm I'm dealing with so much epoxy. I have so much epoxy I'm dealing with right now, Your and favorite. it's just yeah, it's just not enjoyable to me. 
Um, it's not like miserable. I don't like hate it, but I'd really rather just be working with some wood, but it's, it's a necessary thing. Um, it's just like if I had to sand all week, you know what I mean? It's just like something you got to do, but it's just not something I enjoy. I know there's people who really enjoy epoxy and I'm really happy for them, but I'm, I, did I tell the story about the, the slab that got stolen from my customer's coffee table? Yes. It was a very long, boring story. You told us. Yes, it is. Okay. So I told the boring story about that uh, and everyone was enthralled. Um, I just woke up. What? (laughs) (laughs) So there was a slab stolen. Anyway, my client got a different slab, and the, the 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 yard gave me an upgrade. Basically, I got like a hundred dollar more expensive slab, which is a bigger slab. Well, it's a bigger slab, which means more work for me, uh, because I have to stabilize more of it. But also, when I took it down to Macbeth to run it through the drum sander, it got checking all over it. It released a ton of tension, and there was checking all over the place. So I've probably, no joke, I've probably put a quarter of a gallon of epoxy into this freaking slab this week, this week alone on this one slab. And, you know, every day I've done two two pours, mini pours, just filling knots and filling bubbles and stuff. So it's just not really um, my thing. And it's just taking a lot of time. So, uh, but I'm... Sounds like it's still drying. The wood. No, it's dry. It was because we took off, it was so, it had a twist to it, and when we removed that wood, it released the tension, and it cracked. Oh, okay. So, there was basically a long crack that went down through the, it was like a, um, it didn't go through the wood, it was like lateral, and it went through the length of it. So, I've been having to fill that in and stabilize it. So, it's definitely dry. Redwood, the slab's probably been sitting out there for like a year and a half, and Redwood drives in like six months. It's so, it dries so fast. But anyway. That's all I've been doing all week. Um, I think, I don't know if I told the story, but I found this, uh, I bought this trailer load of wood. I've talked about it before. And I got this piece of wood on it that I swore was walnut. I swore it was walnut. For a long time I had it, I swore it was walnut. Well, I broke into it. I I ran it through my joiner. I had to go do a bunch of passes because it was all twisted. Got it planed down. I surfaced the whole thing, S4S. And I was like, this is definitely not walnut. (laughs) So I kind of threw out to the, you know, the Instagram hive mind. Hey, what, what is this? And the majority of the people who gave me answers that I trust said it was Hackberry. So I did some research on Hackberry because I've never worked with Hackberry and it's definitely Hackberry, but it was in bad shape. So I've been filling that as well with epoxy, but this piece of wood, there's these two pieces of wood are so pretty. I'm going to be turning them into a console table. They're going to be, it's going to be a top a tabletop and then a shelf below it. So um, and then I f- have this other slab that I bought from the same place out of their discount rack. And it's this, um, it's a Japanese elm called Zelkova. And I've worked with it in the past, but it's like, it tools really nice. It smells really good. It's, uh, it's really pretty stuff. So I'm going to be making the, the aprons and the legs and the sub, the frame out of the, out of that Zelkova and it'll match it up with Hackberry. It's going to be a really cool piece of a uh, really cool console table. I'm really excited to build it. So that's been my bench. And uh, what else? Um, uh, Mike, I actually have a question for you. Yeah. How dare you? But also, uh, speaking oh. of Japanese, you got those uh, those saws in this week. Have you tried that was them out an yet? Office reference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Suzanne. Yes, I actually have. They actually reached out to me. By the way, also when you said it in a story, I was doing dishes and I wasn't looking at what you were holding, and I thought you were just talking to us about somebody named Suzanne. Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, so yeah, Suzanne were... sent me these. I, I was actually... like. Who's Suzanne? <laughs> I actually have their um, flush trim saw, their Ryoba, Ryoba mm-hmm. saw, and their uh, Dozuki. <laughs> their Dozuki, I have the smaller Dozuki, which is their dovetail saw. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, you know, we, we'll send you these if you want. Anyway, but, you know, the spiel. Um, I said, oh, great. Can I get the folding Ryoba and the, the really big Dozuki? Because the Dozuki that I have was too small for cutting dovetails. Um, I've since bought the uh, Veritas you know, Western style push saw for dovetails. Um, but with this bigger one, I think I might actually like that one as well. So I don't want to like jump between different styles of dovetail saws when I am able to get back into uh, practicing dovetails. But um, I'm going to see how it is so far. I mean, they're great saws. I mean, I already yeah. okay. have a couple of them. They're really great. I'm, saws. I'm genuinely asking because I'm, I'm kind of in the market for one and I've been eyeballing their stuff. So that's what I wanted to know. I mean, I'm going to be straight up. I have a couple other, I have another brand called Zet Saw. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've heard of that brand. Uh, I would very realistically put them on this on par with each other. Uh, they're both very, very good. 
Um, and I don't think you're going to go wrong with either. Uh, I do like the Suzanne just because it's more of an established brand, I feel like. Um, but that's really the – other than that, in terms of performance, I use both of them equally, and they have the same results, similar results, I would say. So they're both really good. But Thanks I for the info that I could have asked you in chat. <laughs> no, this is I also great. have a couple of Suzanne's, and they're great. <clears throat> yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're, they're great. sweet. They're okay. sweet sand. It doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried um, to scratch into it. <laughs> bad. That was bad. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, what else? I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm working on... Oh, that isn't the only thing on my bench. Oh I my finally God. started my micro jig match fit crosscut sled. And I'm actually... Um, I, I don't know. If, is this boring to talk about? Like how I'm filming it for YouTube? Or is that kind of neat or no? No, it's fine. I'm it's, like a, it's a four by eight sheet sled, right? Yeah, it's a full entire 48 by 96 yeah. sheet of plywood. It's <laughs> massive. It's I know big. it's not. Wait, I thought you were serious it's, for a no. second there. <laughs> it's like pretty big. The... Though. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, I want to say it's 30 by 20 or it might even be 24 by 32. It's pretty big, but I like a big crosscut sled. Yeah. I, but, have, I have one about that big. I yeah, I, I like a big one because you can put, you can really use it for a cross. It's just great. And then I'm going to make an, another one that's going to be just a miter sled, which will be a run, one rail miter sled. But anyway, the point is, is um, I'm fil- I got this new lens, right? And I'm filming it more. Uh, I'm trying to to not lean so hard into voiceover, just grabbing all my footage and doing a voiceover. I'm trying to actually do talking head voiceover while I'm recording and kind of either explaining what I just did with a talking head or explain what I'm about to do with a talking head and go into montages more. So it looks a little bit more well cut and put together. So that's something I'm working on for this video. And I'm hoping to have this out Thursday. I'm trying to get back to once a week, which is I've been very much failing to do for the last two months. It's just been really hard to stay with, but I'm really motivated to get that going again. So it's um, tough to stay on top of YouTube. It's really hard. It's yeah, so much telling me, Oof. <laughs> it's so much more work than Instagram. Like it's just with Instagram. On t- I mean, you can't, you just can't anyway, but that's what I'm doing now. I'm really excited to try this. I got this new lens, the 16 millimeter lens. Pete, you have to get it. I was just talking with Nick key, key woodworks. Um, don't peer pressure me into buying stuff. I bought the Merca already. Calm down. <laughs> hey, you don't have to buy it. I'm just telling you, I really love it. No, uh, but last time with the Merca, you were going to make fun of freaking you. right. Um, <laughs> I always am. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> no, but, but I was talking with Nick, uh, Nick Key, and he just filmed. He's putting out a video, and he filmed the whole thing on that same lens. I'm like gonna use it for everything except for one. I'm gonna use my 50 mil for my like beauty shots, but this 16 millimeter lens is money. If you watched my video, the vo- the talking head parts, uh, the video I just released on YouTube, all the talking head parts is me using that 16, and it is crisp and it's really nice. I really like that lens a lot. So anyway, that's pretty boring, I guess. Sorry, guys. <laughs> No comment. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, the photographer uh, has no comment on lenses. Yeah. All right. Well, he doesn't care about anything I do. Riveting content, guys. <laughs> All right. Hey, how about some voicemails, Mike? Hey, you know what? We don't have nearly as much as last week, and it's kind of nice because we're not going to have to rush through them. So, yes, and uh, apologies to anyone that sent him in last week. We didn't forget about you. Yeah, just, we had to just move we, some over. We just had like and 20. I do want to apologize to Lee. Lee, I'm sorry I missed yours last week. I do apologize. Uh, that is on me and 100%. Uh, bourbon Mike strike back. So this next one is, or this first one is from Chad Hibbs. We just got here. <laughs> last week, one. last week, last week. Um, this is from Chad Hibbs. He has a question about, uh, my note says Daros. Oh, uh, keyword. Whenever I say this person has a question about woodworking, it means I forgot what they called about. <laughs> so if I ever say this person has a question <laughs> about woodworking, I just oh. forgot what they were called about. But Chad has uh, a question about the Daros. Hey guys, my question this week is in regards to your Mercadero Sanders. I currently have the Festival Rotex 150 and I've been looking to get a better finished sander and um, looking at the the Mercaderos. So do you guys feel that that works well for finished sanding or is it more for, you know, taking off a significant amount of material? Thanks. I will start this one. I'm Um, just going to ditto whatever Mike says before I even hear it. Go. So, if you already have the Rotex, I don't think you should necessarily get rid of it, but I don't think that you necessarily need it if you get the Merca, because 
Merka makes paper that makes the Daros ridiculously aggressive. Now, you could also use that paper on your Festool, but if you want to save yourself a couple tools, get I would say get rid of the Rotex, get the Daros, the 5 millimeter stroke. Uh, they have a 2.5 millimeter stroke, which is more of a true finish sander, uh, but the 5 millimeter stroke uh, Daros it makes a very nice finish. And I know Dan and Pete can both attest to that. If you have the Abernet paper on there, the finish is just, it's beautiful. No swirl, gets through the grits fast, and it just looks really nice. In my opinion, the Daros is the, is is actually, I don't even know that it's my opinion. I think based on numbers, the Daros is a better finishing sander than the Rotex. Uh, I think there's question as to whether or not the Rotex is a better stock removal sander, but I personally don't think it's a better stock removal sander. I think that the the Daros and the Rotex are similar in stock removal, but the Rotex does a better job with finish sanding, and in my mind, that makes it the better sander. The Rotex is the better sander? No. Did I say that? Yes. Well, what I meant to say was the Rotex <laughs> is a good stock removal sander, well, and the Daros, is a, <laughs> the Daros is the better finish sander, but I also think that the, the Daros can do as much stock removal as the Rotex, therefore making it a, you know it's a double it's it's you know you got it's yeah. two for one there so i think it's the better mm-hmm. sand out of the two pete yeah I, I mean i i can't agree more I, I think it's a really good i've used the 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 festool one too and festival rotex is it's great it's a great sander like i'm not like we're not you know saying that it's a bad sander but the the mercaderos is really even something as simple as the fact that you don't have to balance it while you're sanding it's sitting on its own. It's balancing itself. Yeah, I didn't even mention that. I mean, yeah, it's you can do it with so well finger. balanced. The the vibration is definitely less, so the the reduced vibration in it is is great. Uh, if you're into that stuff, it's got Bluetooth and there's an app and you can track vibration. That's the crazy stuff with it, which I found out like after the fact. But mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, it's it 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 makes me like sanding, and that's yeah. saying a lot. It I actually really enjoy sanding adorable. because yeah. you're actively seeing material be removed or pieces become like instantaneously smooth. You know, when you're Pete, doing the finishing. At risk of this becoming like sounding like a Merca ad, I mean that I have never been able to. I haven't been able to figure out why it's made sanding more enjoyable, and it's because yeah, you do see the results faster. Yeah. And sanding is such usually such a slow process. Um, you don't get those results immediately, but with the Daros, you really do. Yeah. So. And like Dan and I both did that, the, the test, you know, where we just took like the roughest lumber we had and we did a little video of it sanding and like removing a lot of material. When I was working on that barn bar, like we put a live edge slab on top and it was rough. It's a rough piece of oak that's been sitting in my shop for a while. And it, I cleaned that up in under 20 minutes of sanding the whole thing, like dead flat, nice and smooth. Uh, smooth to the touch. Yeah, it, it's it it does the work. It's definitely it worth it. What about what about you, Dan? I I agree fully with all those comments, but I will say that uh, you're missing something about the Rotex, and it's got that aggressive Rotex mode, yeah. which the Daros doesn't have. Doesn't have that, and that comes in handy when you're doing a lot of slab work and you're doing a lot of rough sanding. That will remove a lot of material. Okay. I'm, have you used I'm willing the to SHD say- yet? I have an SHD paper. No, Man, you, you got to get the SHD paper. Was it's, that the stuff you just got? It's insane. I don't do a whole lot of slab work, but I used to at that other shop. Uh, but also like for me, I don't know if it counters because I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Rotex. So a drum sander can remove that much, right, Dan? It can. But if you're working with a 12 foot slab, you're right. 50 inches wide. Yes. Yeah, so you got to bring the tool to the yeah. tool to the piece. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Good point. But that that I'm not discounting the Merc at all. I love my Oh, Merc. I know you're not. It, it does an True. amazing job. Facts it, are facts. No remove, one needs to obscure the facts. Yeah, it'll it'll remove a ton of material and it's amazing finish sander. Mm-hmm. But you know, I just I wanted to remind everybody that the Rotex still has that aggressive Rotex mode. Right. That the is meant for Rotex stuff mode. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's I all. I think that answers that. I uh I think that's a fair and reasonable response. Yep. Yes. Um, this next one is from Lefty. He's got a very interesting question, and I think this one will go quick, but um, it's about clients seeing a build on social media. 
Hey guys, Lefty, Kevin from Lefty's Wood Shop, I guess. I was wondering if you ever had a problem with a client watching your stories and kind of bugging you about the timeline for a build when you're kind of taking a little break and fitting some other projects in. Anyway, love the show, guys. Thanks. Bye. Dan? I've had one client kind of be a problem, and I won't say what project I was working on because they may or may not listen to this. But uh, other than the one, you know, it hasn't been a problem, I wouldn't think. Um, they, they understand that, you know, you need breaks and you need to have a time off just like any job. They're not going to expect you to work 24 seven. Right. And what they see on social media isn't what I'm doing all day long. You know, they're, they're seeing little clips, little 15 second clips. If they're going to judge my whole day based on a 15 second clip, then we need to have a talk, but it has, it hasn't been a problem other than the one guy. Right. What about you, Pete? Who? Oh. <laughs> no, me, not, I, don't, I don't have an example of that. I've never had that issue. We're going to get to that. Um, I haven't had that issue. What about you, Mike? No, I haven't had that issue. I haven't done enough client work to... I mean, most of the... It doesn't matter. No, I have not. So I, I have felt that. guilty about it sometimes. Yeah. Where I'm like, I know I'm actively ignoring a project. Um, but, but, it, then, because, you know, but I've never had anyone actually reach out about it. It'll come down it. to setting client expectations. Nailed it. All right. Um, this next question is Lee's from last week. Lee Oman from it's his question from last week. So let's get to this one. This is a good one too. I like this one. Hey guys, it's Lee from Regal Street Woodshop. You're making a project for a customer. Do you ask their permission to put your brand or your maker's mark on the piece? Or do you just do it no matter what? Everything that leaves the shop has your brand on it. Let me know what you guys think. Pete? Um, any project that leaves my shop that I remember to brand is branded. Uh, that's not even, it doesn't even come up in conversation. It is branded somewhere. Um, and the reason I stipulated when I remember, because there's been plenty of times where I just like finished the board or even <laughs> this truck box that I just made. I literally, it was in a car I'm driving over and I go, I never branded it. Damn it. <laughs> so, um, but yes, usually I will, I will brand a product every time. It's not even negotiable, but obviously I'm not going to be like obnoxious about it uh, and like put it dead center on a, on a desk. Uh, however, I've had people legitimately request my logo to be at like for a sec- well, cutting board, Mike's favorite. Um, when I'm doing a cutting board, I've had people request my logo like on the top, on the face. And I usually put it on the bottom if it's one with feet. So um, yeah, there's always a brand on my stuff. What about you, Dan? Well, not only am I a furniture maker, but I also kind of sort of consider myself an artist. And any artist worth their salt will will sign a painting or a sculpture or whatever. So, But with that said, I don't own a branding iron, so nothing ever gets branded. <laughs> <laughs> you sneaky so-and-so. <laughs> uh, I very actively try to brand every single thing I can. I very much forget to do it, <laughs> but if I have a big, if I have a build, I'm definitely going to put my brand on there. If I think it's not going to ruin an aesthetic, yes. like I'm doing this coffee table and it's definitely getting my brand on the bottom out of the way near the legs, somewhere where it kind of gets hidden by the shadows, but it's definitely there. So, and I'm also going to um, put one of my beard hairs on there before I put the finish on. It's yeah. going to be, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be real gross seal it in on the first coat yeah go i want to back up first... a little bit uh back last summer when i was making all those mosaics they all got my maker's mark on them on the back Make because sense. that was a that was a piece of art that you hung on the wall right i don't worry too much about furniture for some Please, reason why would you spill whiskey on there you know you're very funny okay cool move on Jeez. That was a stretch. Uh, now looking for a third member of the podcast. So okay. <laughs> get rid of me. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that was quick. This next question is from Scott. And he has a question about, this one's a, li- a little bit tricky. It kind of doesn't make sense at first, but it, it really gets going and it makes sense once you get into the question. So this is from Scott. It's about sheet goods versus dimension lumber. Hey, guys. Scott 
Scott Orum from Data Yourself DIY here. Yep, it's pronounced Orum, not O or Man. Uh, <laughs> question for you. So at what point do you consider a project too small or too large in the sense of using a veneer hardwood plywood? So like a walnut or a maple plywood, what project would be too small? Do you think where you would get better results with just using regular hardwood or what size would a project be too big to use hardwood excluding say you know a table um and what would be a good hybrid use of both thanks a bunch love the show i'll take this one since dan's hands are up and he's annoyed apparently <laughs> well, no, i have no idea no. how to answer that well i mean i think Give me an answer maybe i can steal something from you go yeah, well you can i know you can so i was doing that i had that i won't go into it much but i had a project where i was supposed to build this big wardrobe and um anything but sheet goods didn't make sense for it it was going to be like a nice not mm -hmm. like birch it was going to be like a white oak plywood carcass because it's essentially just a cabinet. It didn't make sense to have, uh, you know, four quarter white oak for this thing. The thing would have weighed several hundred pounds because it was going to be uh, six feet tall, four foot wide, and two feet deep. Um, it didn't make sense to make big panels for that. The thing would have had so much wood movement that sheet goods made sense for that. So I think this is where Scott's going with this question. Um, so in terms of his very specific question of, is there a size? I don't, I don't know that there is a size. I think you just kind of look at it and go, okay, it makes more sense. If you're trying to join up a panel that's uh, five or four feet wide, that's where it starts to make sense to just go with plywood at that point. Because um, unless the client specifically wants to mention lumber, that's a huge panel you're going to be gluing up. And that's a lot of material and a lot of labor you're going to be doing too. So it's definitely a factor in terms of price, I guess, would be the one thing. I don't know. That's that's kind of my thought and my best way to answer the question. I'm having a hard time really specifically answering this question because I don't know that I've ran into anything specifically like this. I know he asked about what about hybrids. Well, on that particular build, the way I had designed it was with a, a sheet good white oak carcass, and the whole thing was going to be trimmed out with dimensioned lumber, white oak as well. So it was going to have the feet... Um, the runners, um, everything, the, the string, everything about it was going to be everything that wasn't just the box was going to be, um, was going to be dimension lumber. So that's as best as I can really answer it. I, I don't know specifically. I I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of confused like Dan a little bit and I'm not really sure how to answer it. So, uh, that's the best I can do. <laughs> so Dan, what about you? Ditto. No, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, if you're making big panels, 99% of the time, it's best to go with a plywood. About the only time you want to use a solid dimensional lumber when you're making a big panel is a tabletop that's going to get heavy usage. Right. Well, and plywood has a very, issue, right? Yeah. I mean, because you're spanning so far, you need that, that strength so it doesn't sag, right? Isn't that part of it? Also that, and plywood... Uh, hardwood plywood, hardwood veneered plywood usually has a very thin layer of plywood, like a 30 mm -hmm. second of an inch. Mm -hmm. It's just the and, top pie, right? Right. The bottom pie. And that will ding and chip very easily, and it's not good for a tabletop. But it's great. So, like, look at cabinetry. Cabinets, sides of cabinets, shelves of cabinets. Uh, it's usually all hard or hard... Pl Hardwood plywood. veneered plywood. Right. I can't talk. And then you have a face frame that's... The face frame, that's yep. what's going to get beat up the most. The face frame and the doors, they're all hardwood, mm -hmm. solid hardwood. So just look at cabinets. Um, but yeah, as far as Mike said, uh, I don't think there's like a hard number right. that you can reference. You just kind of have to know. Yeah. Which is kind of a sucky answer to give, but I mean, that's really the answer. It's just kind of a... kind of You just kind of have to know, I guess. Right? Yeah. I... And one thing we didn't really mention, but I, I so I agree totally with Mike and Dan on this. Uh, the only thing we didn't mention is, I guess, in certain cases, cost. I mean, 
Dan, you're doing your whole project, the cabinets and the shelves and everything out of solid walnut, right? Yep. Yep. But if yep. the customer needed to cut corners a little bit, I mean, right. walnut, you know, walnut plywood for the side panels or the shelves right. themselves would actually work. So cost comes into it too. It is, it is, it is kind of like a, there is no just one answer for this, fortunately. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot so of like, factors. Yeah. Yeah. So like the the desk I'm I'm working on now, it has a bookcase on either side, and the bookcase on the right hand side is going to have a drawer system underneath the desktop, and I could ease I could easily make that out of plywood, and it would it would save me money, and it would probably save me time as well, because it's yeah. flatter and it's easier to cut and deal with. But I'm gonna make it out of solid walnut because that's what they want and that's what they paid for. Yeah. There you go. Stability, longevity, and cost. That's the three things you should consider. Yeah, span. I would say span yeah. is something to consider. So, well, then again, uh, Dan's building a forty-foot desk. See, so sorry we can't give you like a better answer, man. But yeah, um, I think that's I think all situational. we can. It is, yeah. Um, and I think we're gonna do one more question here before we get into the giveaway. This is from a young fella by the name of uh, J the D from the Big <laughs> IG. <laughs> this is Josh the Dad. Josh, thanks, man. Hey guys, it's Josh the Dad of Josh the Dad One of the Big IG, or is it J the D of the Big IG? I, I don't know. I'm having an identity crisis. Anyways, so my question comes from the shop this week. About a month ago, my daughter bought these baskets from the IK store, and she said, "Hey, Dad, can you help me build a shelf to put these on next to my bed?" And I asked her, well, why is that? And she said, well, I didn't measure, right? And the shelf I have doesn't work. And I said, sure, no problem. We can do this. It'll be fun. It'll be great. We can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I don't build furniture. I build toys. But I said, we can do this. I've got a Craig Jig pocket hole thingy. We can make it happen. So we started. And what did we do? She kept asking me, Dad, how much is it going to cost to buy the wood for this? Because I'll buy it. And I said, no, no, no. I have some one by 12 quality pine on the shelf in the garage. Pause for groaning. Mm. All right. <laughs> so I know cupping, bending, folding, twisting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would rather use crummy old wood to test this build than to go get quality hardwood before we build the real thing. So that's what we did. She just kept saying, Dad, we're building memories. And I kept saying, no, we're building crap. But <laughs> so what's your suggestion for someone like me who doesn't usually build furniture but wants to kind of get into little things? What type of wood should I really be practicing with? Thanks, guys. Pete? Oh, this, I was getting all hot and bothered when he was talking. Pocket holes? Pine? Memories? Oh, yeah. my favorite things. So... <laughs> Polish scotch in this one. Oh, no. <laughs> Get the whole trifecta going. Pine, <laughs> memories, Polish scotch. <laughs> Honestly, if, if you're getting into furniture making, um, yes, it is the most forgiving of woods because you don't feel bad about wasting it. But any think of it like when you're building for worst case scenario, like when you're, you know, you're eventually getting into woodworking and like you're, you've been doing it for a while, you build assuming everything that could happen. If you're building out of pine, first of all, it's soft. It's going to move a lot. It might cup or whatever. It's not going to absorb stain properly. It's literally worst case scenario. <laughs> Jesus, my. Uh, it's, it's worst case scenario for everything. And that's the perfect way to learn because you see the worst of everything that could go wrong. And this is, think of it this way. It's like my first YouTube video that's going to be hot trash when I release it. Calm it's, down. All, it's all, listen, it's all downhill from here. you like, <laughs> it gets easier. Uh, you figure it out more. And when you look at that shelf in a year, your daughter's not going to notice it. But when you see like gaps, little checks or uneven stain, you're going to know that like next time you're building something, it's going to be a completely different ball game. What about you, Dan? You, lo you love pine. You know, you love running it through your drum sander. <laughs> I wouldn't run it through your drum sander. <laughs> However, everything Pete said is dead money spot on. It's the best. It's the best stuff to practice with because of everything that he said. It's cheap. It's unforgiving because of all the troubles it'll give you, and you learn a lot from it. So I couldn't agree with more with Pete. Man, it hurts to say that, but that no, it's weird. Mike. No, I agree too. I I mean I, pine is just great to learn on and build skills on for sure. Bottom line, I 
despise it with every fiber of my being because it causes a mess and it's just not nice looking in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. So it doesn't matter. But the bottom line is is that the uh it's a good it's a good tool to learn on. And it's a good utilitarian piece of wood. It does the job. It is technically wood based on everything <laughs> I've read. And it will and it will be a piece of wood. So uh you know it'll do what you need to do and you can learn on it. And it's dirt cheap. So you just can't beat it. I mean you can literally find it on the side of the road. They I've put, made you know, yeah, go ahead. Not even no, Dan, go ahead. Stretch. I was going to say, I've made plenty of stuff out of construction pine that's still sitting around in my house. Yeah. Like, it's, years later. It's checked and cracked, but it's there. Yeah, it's it's fine to, to start out with. There's nothing it's wrong great. with it. It's great. That's not what it is. That's, you nailed best. it. Josh, it is, it's, the it's best. fine. Just, well, what, I mean, people shouldn't start out on, like, walnut. No. They should start out on pine because, it's, no. like Pete said, it's, it's basically disposable. You know, yeah, it's the water of of wood elements. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen, it's everywhere. Seventy percent. Here's of what it is. Made of pine or whatever. I can sum it up perfectly in this phrase. <laughs> this is gonna it's be good, guys. Fi- it's fine woodworking. It's not great woodworking. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it it it's definitely the best choice. Uh, yeah. And all the jokes, all the hate. That's not even jokes. I really do feel it in my heart. I don't like pine. All the hate I throw towards pine. It's a really good wood to learn on very good word wood to learn learn on go buy a bunch of pine saw be ready to clean your tools all the time but it's a great it's a great wood to learn on it and it really is just fine pine is fine (laughs) pine is fine (laughs) this is a thing now (laughs) so that's it from uh for the questions for now because we got to go into a giveaway and that means it's dan's turn to talk so i can Mm. can play snake on my phone (laughs) want to make every sure everybody stays awake for this okay okay i'm listening all right this past week we gave away a bow shield t9 tool care kit three pack right and that winner was karen and justin over on ig i've nice. already reached out to them you did so that they're on? super sucked oh i need to do the other thing right gotcha. yes they're yeah, super bet. stoked <laughs> and uh that package will be going out soon this cool. week we are giving away a moss epoxy Crackzilla 185 milliliter container and Woodzilla 185 milliliter container. Sound like monsters. To... They do. <laughs> like uh, Spanish monsters. Yeah. Moss Crackzilla. Crackzilla. <laughs> oh, Moss Crackzilla. <laughs> Together, that's a $60 value. Um, yeah, and this week's. Uh... It looks, and I just, I don't mean, I'll let you, I'll stall for you for a second here. The Crackzilla, it looks like it's a two-part tube. Is that oh, what it's? No, I've, I've, I, I don't know actually. Okay, it looks like it's a two-part, like a, like a hole filler, like a crack filler. Oh, Crackzilla, that makes sense. Huh. What's the other one called there, Dan? Woodzilla. Okay, let me see what this is. Woodzilla. <laughs> I Google quickly. Uh, the Woodzilla is. Oh, this is like the standard traditional two-part, um, like crack and not filler. Like a yeah. like a slow epoxy. Yeah, I knew all that. Okay. So yeah, they're they're going to be getting both of those. Both of them are going to be 185 milliliter containers, cool. jar, a squirter. It looks like a tube, like a squirter tube. tube. <laughs> Container it's of sort. Unit, right. 185 <laughs> units of. <laughs> they're getting some moss epoxy. This week's code phrase is going to be, and I got two options for you guys. Yes. You ready? All right. It's either going to be bourbon branding iron. Okay. And we haven't got to this yet, but we're going to get to it. And I really like this one. Charlie's Furniture Factory. (laughs) Yep, that's the winner. (laughs) This is going to be a much better code word when we get farther into the show. (laughs) I was hoping. When you get to it, you'll get it. (laughs) Is it? Say it again, Dan. It's what? Charlie's Furniture Factory. Charlie and the Furniture Factory. Yep, someone dies <laughs> in every Charlie room. The chocolate factory. <laughs> Charlie and the Furniture Factory. Charlie oh, and the God. Charlie. Okay, whatever you want it to be. It doesn't matter to me. That's All good. right, Charlie. Oh. Charlie and the Furniture Factory. Is and, that it? Uh, yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Right, yeah. Did you right. see Charlie's right. Furniture Factory? No, we yeah, you're not switched it. We switched no. it. Charlie and, and the Furniture Factory. <laughs> Uh, we probably should have read that question first, but it's actually really cool because now we've created a ton of anticipation anticipation Ooh. for the next voicemails. <laughs> <laughs> should we save that like voicemail? Like what the news? Yeah, I was saving for last. 
It's like what the news do. Aliens are stealing your children. <laughs> Stay tuned to the end. <laughs> is is your soap killing you? Find out at 11. <laughs> no, it's absolutely not. That's crazy. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so that's it for the giveaway. That's it. Based on my notes here that Pete compiled, we're moving on to more voicemails. And <laughs> this voicemail is from Ed, and he's asking about the metric system, and Dan's already mad. I'm already happy. Hey, guys. Um, this is Ed Manguel, um, newbie woodworker here. And I wanted to hear your thoughts on changing over to the metric system. What do you guys think? Um, great show, guys. Keep up the good work. Ed, thanks for the question. I'm going to go first because I can't throw it to Dan because he's going to be so negative right now. And it's going to hurt so many feelings. <laughs> he's already... Wow, Dan's not even saying anything. What the heck? He's that mad. <laughs> he's that he's mad. He's frozen or really mad? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, I actually am closer to Dan on this feeling than one would guess because I was making fun of Dan. <laughs> I am very resistant to changing over to it, but I really know that metric is more efficient for what we do with woodworking and stuff in terms of once you learn it, it's quick. I mean, Pete, do you know metric? That's not like me being right. like a jokester, a Polish joke. Like, do you Why know it? You like, it, are you <laughs> answering your question? Then okay. throw it to Dan. Right. Then throw it to me. Okay, deal. Uh, I know based on a very small amount of dealings with my domino, which is metric based, and like learning, you know, the small amount of metric I've had to learn for that, so that I can equate it to imperial. I feel like metric is a bit more efficient, <laughs> especially for what we're doing. So uh, I do think it would be okay <laughs> and i'm not i don't want to sound like a crazy person but i think it'd probably be a good move and that's kind of my opinion on it <laughs> dan what about you i i don't see any reason to switch like i've been doing this since 1997 and i've been doing it this way since 1997 why would i switch that's crazy you sound so old <laughs> <laughs> was reagan president when you started woodworking when i started doing dare <laughs> in the imperial system. <laughs> no, I've been doing it. I've been doing it, you know, with imperial for so long. I don't see, I don't see the reason to switch. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not missing anything in my life by not having metric. Right. Who needs insurance? I've never had it before. I don't need it now. <laughs> <laughs> you say like we're gonna get overthrown and have to start no. all using metric. Like no, we're totally not. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. You inferred that. Based on my comments. Um, oh, sad thing is no one can overthrow us. That's yeah. <laughs> Sad thing? Whoa, that's some pretty... Uh... Well, I guess that spoils my life. <laughs> Dan, are you done? Can I I'm say done. anything now? I'm, I'm okay. so done. Metric is superior in every freaking way. Fahrenheit's <laughs> stupid. If we should just go to metric. Why? Okay, I have a digital caliper. And guess what? It has millimeters and it has two settings for freaking imperial because... The, there's the one with the little line across it, like, oh, I'm dividing one by two. It's a half. Uh, stupid. It's stupid. And then I have another setting for 0.5. Why? Because it's dumb. I'm going off on a rant here, and I know, I'm just trying to get us followers in all <laughs> of Europe. Nowhere, and then you have Asia. no idea where we're going with this. <laughs> no, but, no. The fact of the matter is, I so in the shop, I unfortunately I use Imperial because that's just what I'm used to. That's what yeah, I, that's for the last 20-something years, I've been using <laughs> But for any precision work, any design that I do on um, in, in CAD and anything I do in Fusion and anything for 3D printing, I, like I'm going full metric because it is superior. It just makes more sense. Everything's by 10. Decimeter? Oh, you haven't lived till you tried decimeters. They're the best. They're 10, <laughs> 10 centimeters. They're great. I'm just educating Dan you guys because you're so from America. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I said it. And this is legitimately not to like piss off Dan and Mike because I know sometimes I do the opposite of whatever they say. It's it really is superior. And also <laughs> Fahrenheit's stupid. I'm adding that one on there too. Fahrenheit's just dumb. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Water boils at hundred, it freezes at zero, not thirty-two or whatever. <laughs> it's stupid. What's up, Canada? Hey, we're 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 like top ten in hobbies a couple weeks ago. Oh my god, I wish people could see Dan right now. I mean, some oh, people can, but I wish man. everyone could see Dan. Dan's so, so mad right out. now. That's why I wanted to go last. Anyway, next question. Don't give Dan a rebuttal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, uh, I next, don't. This He's next kind of like an idiot, though. 
This next question <laughs> is uh, from Justin with Campfire Woodworks. Thank you, Justin. He has a question about woodworking. <laughs> hey, guys. Justin here over at Campfire Woodworks. I got a quick question for you about shop storage. So it seems like today every single tool company that I buy something from, whether it's power tools or hand tools, wants to send their product along with a uh, fancy little plastic multi container to keep it in. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I work in a small shop, and uh, I don't really have room to store these plastic containers. So my question for you is, you know, when you get a new tool, do you keep the container or the case that it came in, or do you find alternative storage for it? Thanks, guys. Looking forward to hearing your answer. Dan? I want to go back to the millimeter thing real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I cannot stand those sustainers. They They do take up unneeded room, like... They and what makes me angry about them is it's that millimeters. they are in millimeters. <laughs> a lot of them. No, what makes me angry the about them is they're so nice looking. I I genuinely feel bad for wanting to get rid of them. Like tools used to come in like a cardboard box and that was it. And then they started coming in like a little in 87 when you started. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then they started coming in like a little canvas bag. And I'm like, OK, it's just a little canvas bag. I can toss that. Now they come in sustainers. That all like lock together, and I feel bad about getting rid of it because they're so nicely engineered. It makes me angry. I don't like them. Well, so You've been done lapped. <laughs> <laughs> Keep trying to make it a thing. Uh, whoever wants to go next can go. I'm not calling on anybody. Next. Get the most sustainer. Go. Uh, okay, I'm kind of a hybrid answer. I think I really like when I'm not using the tool that they're in the sustainer and it's so clean and organized and tidy. I really like things having a home. I do not like when I have to get to the tool and open it up and get to it. That is really annoying. But I also don't like having my tools strewn out everywhere. So when things are in the sustainers, it's super nice. But when I have to get them out, it's kind of a pain in the neck. However, I mean, I don't disagree with you, Dan. It, it's a pain in the neck getting them out. But however, I am trying to figure out some storage solution where it's kind of on shelves and I can pull everything out. But... It's not happening anytime soon. I've got way more things to worry about right now than uh, making my tool containers more efficient. So, exactly. um, I mean, it's just like, it's just not high on the list. But uh, I like when they're put away. I don't like having to get to them. Pete? Mm. Uh, that was Justin, right? From Campfire? Yeah, Justin. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how dare you just get in our face like that? Like, oh, I got so many sustainers. I can't fit them anywhere. Come on, bro. Really? <laughs> <laughs> now to answer your question. That was um, so dramatic and ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think I, he's allowed to answer. Dan, vote. <laughs> I, I weirdly enough, because I guess I, I they're they're not. I don't have enough of them. I only have two. I only have the Makita track saw and then the, uh, the Daros, and I kind of really like it. I for I have a big pet peeve with tools just coming in boxes. I actually like I I try to treat my tools okay. Um, so I liked when they came in like at least a bag. Uh, because I used to go on job sites a lot back in the day and like, that would come in handy. And having it on a sustainer, it like makes me feel like it's a quality tool and I like to treat it like such. And that's exactly um, how they, want, they you want, you want you to feel, feel though. I mean, that it's... being said, hang on, you two, okay? Don't, don't lap me. Don't cut me off. <laughs> um, <laughs> that being said, I can totally see the problem when you have multiples. Like one of my next things on my list is, is getting a domino. And then like, what's next? And then I start stacking stuff and suddenly I have way too many freaking boxes for anything. So I totally get what you're saying. I see people selling sustainers on Facebook marketplace all the time with no tools in them, just sustainers. Cause they're kind of annoying. Wait, like there is such a thing as too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah just go to, bang it, go to facebook.com. You'll, you'll see Stop marketplace. Stop uh, so I, I do see how it's annoying. Uh, I think early on it's exciting. Then it gets really annoying because it's kind of bulky. Let's be real. That's that's it. And yeah, I, that's it. Can I counterpoint? Yeah, go for it. Something. I I um so I mean here's the other option, right? You're gonna make some drawers or you're gonna put them on some horizontal surface, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only other option outside of a sustainer. Is there any other yeah. one that I'm missing? I, I've been like putting them in my tool chest lately. So tool chest? Yeah. hundred and fifty years old, a tool chest. No bro, I work <laughs> my car, bro. Chopped out my carburetor no, last week. Um, <laughs> no, uh, what I like is that when they're in there, you know they're safe. They're not gonna let. They're much less prone to getting damaged. Like if I've got my tools just out, 
I just don't want them to get damaged really bad because they're so pricey. You know, there's so much money. I just don't want them to get hurt. So that's another like for me, it's another like, OK, but also they're not. All it does is turn the odd shape of the tool because you can't just stack your tools on top of each other unless they're in some sort of cube. And that's what the sustainer provides. So for me, it's like, you know, yeah, they take up more space by volume, but they become more organized because you can stack them up. OK, Pete doesn't well, care. Pete's like no, no, I'm just I'm just thinking of like Dan <laughs> who just like piles up dust collectors because he, he doesn't care. He has a vacuum. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. How do we come back to that. <laughs> I don't even know. I needed to really turn around on you. That one in there. That was bad. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually I shocked that, that, that Pete, the guy who works in a half car garage, likes sustainers. But I only have two, so I can't complain about them yet. I have a few, and I I do like them overall. I I think they're they add a value to keeping my shop organized. So. And the uh, thing is, like, uh, really so hard. just. A quick little tidbit. There's other woodworkers out there that don't really have like the big table saws or they are mobile. So like sustainers do make sense for them because that's their main tools. They don't have like, you know, a saw stop in the middle of their shop. The guy who's doing a lot of installs. I mean, those oh, make a lot of sense. Like you just roll in a, a truck over. real nice. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Dan looks like he's about to flip his table over. So let's go to this next question um, <laughs> from Tim Hunter. That's how you uh, just metric sustainer. Just say that. And he gets all hot and bothered. <laughs> uh, Tim Hunter. He has a question about woodworking. Hey, guys. My name is Tim Hunter. I have an Instagram, but that eh, doesn't really matter. Um, but I've been watching you guys on Instagram. Um, between all three of you, you guys are very inspirational. I think it's awesome you guys are doing this podcast. Um, just in these last few episodes, I've learned so much. It seems like Every time I turn it on, something I'm struggling with is the topic that you guys decide to cover that night. Um, anyways, uh, my question, I guess, tonight would be, hopefully you guys can help me out with this here, is um, when are we going to stop pretending that Pete is actually Charlie Day underneath all that sawdust? <laughs> Go ahead and discuss. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> and there it is. Guy gets it. He gets it. Oh, I want to recreate the photo when my hair gets longer again and I get the Charlie Day hair. I want to do the what here's like he's got the the string going to yeah. different things, but it's going to like a hand plane and a, a saw and like random things on my wall. And, and sustainers, like, yeah. sustainers, <laughs> metric system pictures. Uh, I don't know what that is. For those of you that were confused because you're not cool, uh, oh. we're talking about it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, There's one of the an actor, yeah, Charlie Day and. Charlie Day. He looks and sounds a bit like Pete. And uh, <laughs> he does. a lot, a lot like me. A lot like I've Pete. been getting compared to him for like 10 have, years. Have you really? The yeah. first when that question was supposed to be from last week, and when he, <laughs> I had never seen it until he said it, and now it's all I can see. <laughs> it's Charlie Day. I'm gonna send you a photo of basically me as Charlie Day. Oh yes, but, please. Okay. Actually yeah, send please. it to Dan because he runs the Instagram account. Um, yes, please do. So <laughs> what? We're oh, gonna have so many pictures of Pete on the Instagram. Uh, this oh, question. Fun fact: like every other post is supposed to be me, and every other episode name is supposed to involve me. I keep trying to dial it back. Like, guys, there's you too. <laughs> this one's gonna be related to you this week as well. <laughs> We've already, already got it a show title picked out. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, this next question is from Salish. His name's Jack over at Salish C. He's a question about specialized tools. Hey guys, Jack here from Sailor Sea Woodworks up in the Great Pacific Northwest at Sailor Sea Woodworks on the Big IG. Loving the pod. Here's my question. What is the one specialized tool, so not a drum sander, joiner planer, table saw, that has had the greatest impact in improving the quality of your work? Uh, bonus points if Mike doesn't say Domino, Daniel doesn't say Merca, and Peter doesn't say 3D printer. For me, H&T Gordon hand shoulder plane has really improved the quality of my mortise and tenon, my rabbits, my dados. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun to use, too. Loving the pod, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, looking forward to hearing your answer. Dan? Well, I really got to say, uh, you know, I thought about this a long time. I've been thinking about this whole show, and I really think my domino has been my game changer. What about you, Mike? I'd have to go with my 3D printer. I really like 
my uh I just really like my Prusa. Nice. Yeah. Pete, what about, Pete what um, about you? The but Daros is really nice. I really love my Daros. <laughs> See, this is what you get. You didn't set rules. <laughs> we could have just taken each other's answers. <laughs> Now, if we hypothetically had to give him a serious answer, um, <laughs> Mike, what would be you? What would yours be? Actually, Dan, what would yours be? You went first. Uh, you didn't think of a real answer, did you? No, I never thought of a real answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only thought of a gag. Are you supposed to bring real answers to the table? Oh, Let's try no. to help him. <laughs> uh, Mike, know. while Dan thinks, Mike, what do you got? Honestly, it's tough, man. I mean, specialized tool. I mean, I think about specialized tool, and I'm just like, uh, you know, I think Can't Domino. Like, specialized than the Domino. Yeah, I, I was thinking Domino, and I that's the, that's the one he excluded for me. So it's like, uh, you know, I have a Rabbit Plane too. I really like my Rabbit Plane. I've only used it like three times though since I just got it like a month ago. Um, I mean, that's a really specialized tool. It's for that one purpose. I'm trying to think of other things that are really limited to one purpose but so many tools in the shop are are so utilitarian you can use them for yeah. so many different things it all depends on how you use it yeah pete we know i mean we get it you have sex um <laughs> <laughs> now everyone knows <laughs> no um, um like see i like i want to see i want to say cnc which is kind of like in, along the same lines but again, it's not like a one special. It is a specialized tool, but it's not a one. That's a really good answer, actually, because that's a really specialized tool. Um, it does a lot. It's a very specialized tool, but it does a lot. So I don't say CNC. My favorite specialized tool is Daniel Dunlap. Hey, oh. Dan- <laughs> no, there it is. I don't. I don't. There it is. I don't. I mean, if I can't say Domino, I mean Daros. I don't even think is a specialized tool. He called the that only out. specialized tool I can think of in my shop is the Domino. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to. I mean, I know he said no Domino, but I gotta say Domino. I mean. Uh, I'm not versed enough in like a rabbit plane, which is a really specific specialized tool. Um, chisels, I guess, are specialized tools, right? Well, I've but used yeah. them to break up ice out of the gutter, so. <laughs> so no, that's not Jesus. specialized. <laughs> um, I'm, I might say like even like a track saw. It's re- like you don't think it's nah. like essential till it's essential. Like you said specialized. I think it's essential. I, I feel like that's specialized in a way. Because not everyone has a track saw, and it's a freaking game changer when you get it. But you can do so much with it. That makes it not specialized to me. I think, like, a a rabbit plane, like, only does – cleans up rabbits. I mean, that's really all it's for, like a one-purpose tool. Fair. Uh, I just – I think – anyway. Yeah. I I have to say Domino. And I know Dan's going to say Domino. We we wish we had, like, better answers for you, but those are really good specialized tools. Um, and we're bad at answers, so right. Why do we do this show? It's, this uh, wait, next the drinking. <laughs> this, oh yeah, the drinking. Right. This next one is from Kevin, and he's from Made by Default. Hey guys, this is Kevin with uh, Made by Default on Instagram. I'm just leaving a message. I have two questions for you. And the first question is, uh, what is the uh, co- Coffee Customs uh, Beard Care Regiment? Uh, anything special, or you just rub some uh, some Odie's oil in it at the end of the night. Um, and then number two, uh, I feel like with my woodworking, I'm, I'm getting better about like actually doing projects I want to do or gifts and all that jazz and putting in effort and doing all that. And, and then at the end of it, I uh, take a picture and it looks like a blind monkey taking a picture of a potato. <laughs> um, so uh, any suggestions you have on photography resources for the, uh, for the, uh, complete novice so youtube channels uh photography channels uh even books um uh, i'm open for anything anyway thanks for the podcast i hope you guys have a wonderful day bye i'll answer this one first uh mike rubs (laughs) daniel dunlap wood butter in his beard every night the best only the finest for this beard and uh as far as photography resources i would say you know you got one of the best resources right here in this community and that's nick key I thought you were going to talk about yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know, step number one, if you're taking a picture with your phone, and I see so many people not do this, I, it drives me nuts. Just clean off your lens. Yeah, for real. Yes. Phone. Just yes. take for the time, least, take 10 seconds to clean off your phone lens. Or something. Ugh, yeah. so oh. 
It looks it like you have, like my coffee beard oil. That in there. will oh. like improve your photos so <laughs> much. And if if your phone is just bad, you know, maybe it's time to upgrade to a smartphone and get rid of that flip phone. Yeah, your Nokia yeah. 2300 isn't cutting it anymore, right? Yeah. That dark Snakes corner. Snakes and all, but come on. But there there's a lot of resources out there, and you know, I could give you a ton. I know Will Walker is a phenomenal woodworker, and he he's also a wedding photographer as well, and he's got some. Uh, he had he used to have a series on his YouTube channel called Film Fridays, and he talked about how to make better videos. But he, I think, he also threw in there how to take better photos as well. Yeah. So he's he's worth looking into on YouTube. Uh, like I said, Nick Key, he's a good photographer, and you know he's always willing to help out in that area. area. So if you want to reach out to him, I mean, uh, we're dropping his name twice. We should probably drop the podcast. Does he have a podcast? Yeah. yeah. No. Nick Key and the gang. And then he also does the other one. <laughs> no, he does. Uh, yeah, he's on a it's podcast called Shop, called Shop, Shop Sounds. Sounds with uh, uh, Jason Hibbs. Hibbs and Keith Johnson. Keith Johnson, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Mike. Okay. I thought you were like setting it up and then you just like tested Dan. Right? No, I wasn't testing Dan. I was, Dan was talking. I didn't want to interrupt I, Oh, I thought you were like setting I really it up. wanted to jump in and, and take the beard answer first. <laughs> that but, I, I knew that was coming. I wasn't going to go first no matter what. <laughs> All right. Mike, do you want to answer now? Yeah. Uh, I use Daniel Dunlap board See? butter every night. It's uh, It makes me feel younger and more um, vibrant. I can't think of other description words. <laughs> uh, it uh, helps your attractiveness with the yeah. opposite sex. My attractiveness, I've gone from a solid three to a four. Thanks yep. to Daniel Dunlap beard, beard butter. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> board butter. <laughs> no, I use a product called Billy Jealousy. That's the real name. Uh, it's uh, it's just a be- leave-in beard conditioner. After you shower, you wait 10 minutes, and then you put in the beard conditioner, and you leave it in. And it's what I've been using for like five years. It's fantastic. Maybe even longer, actually. Um, the other question that I'm forgetting – oh, photos. Yeah, I mean it's just about like reaching out to people who know if you know anyone who has that information. Um, I'm not good about taking photos of beauty shots – I really want to set up in my shop the ability to drop um, like a backdrop somewhere so I can take like a controlled background color shots of things. Um, It's just something I want to make look better because I am trying to sell things. And when you take a picture of a finished product in an overly lit room on your workbench, it looks like crap. But when you have it in a controlled environment with a controlled backdrop, it looks a million times better and you're more likely to sell it. So um, it's just something I want to put in my shop really bad. So in terms of actual resources, I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I have a long way to go with that. So I'm trying to figure it out. So I can't really answer the question. So I just am learning as I go. Pete? Um, I, I can't stop thinking about the fact that you said overly lit. And I just kept thinking in my head, like super lit, like so lit that it's like too lit, like a party. But never mind. Um, My yeah, went there. Well, we've been talking about fire, Dan. Come Dan, on, we man. made a huge decision mistake early on in the show. <laughs> I <laughs> don't <laughs> care. <laughs> so for uh, my beard regimen, <laughs> that you asked, um, I use uh, my shower and then whatever bottom shelf oil I buy from Amazon. It comes in a three pack usually and it does the job and it's fine and that's Amazon why it looks terrible. Basics beard goo. Amazon <laughs> Basics beard goo. Uh, <laughs> when I run out, I just use Total Boat, just the hardener part, <laughs> not the, the actual. Hardener. Yeah. <laughs> um, now to seriously answer a question as to the photography, uh, and I'm not saying this because I'm an Apple fanboy. I had Androids for a while and I. I used a Mac or Mac and a PC at home, mostly to PC actually. Walk into any Apple store, request the highest number phone they have, and you're gonna get one of the better cameras on the market, one of the better video recording like devices on the market, one of the better audio devices on the market, and one of the best storage solutions in the market. Like it's not the best, but it's the better because. I think we all use iPhones. We all have fairly new ones. The cameras are pretty damn good. Uh, Mm -hmm. The storage solution, if you get iCloud Drive, uh, I think we all have like a terabyte or two terabyte. It just stores all this stuff for you, and it does a pretty 
good job and you can sync it with so many different apps, uh, it makes it fairly seamless. And I think a lot of us started doing our video on our iPhones and then trans transferred to a camera, except Dan, because Dan's been running, doing photography for years. I've been doing so, photography since 1982. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same as the- No the response the cabinet from Mike shop. From that. Okay. Mike's checking his Twitter account. Um, Sorry, I'm TikTok very, famous. Uh, but yeah, get I'm on TikTok just, looking at girls like, dance. So and yes, you can get an Android phone or whatever. But honestly, like I think iPhones are great for photography and well, they have better cameras. Pretty, I mean, it's not like an opinion. That that's going to win out like a huge. Debate. iPhone 11 has three it cameras matter, on like, it. It's great. It's so freaking good. Get it. It wins that's out it. like on. It doesn't matter. You're right. It's it's yeah. whatever. If you want to get like really good photos, you're just going to have to learn how to do it. There's no like cheat. Everyone's looking for like, hey, what's the, how do I hack the algorithm? How do I make this thing? The bottom line is, is like the thing that wins on Instagram is really good content. And the thing that wins on Those learning things. how to take a camera is learning how to take a picture with a camera. You just have to learn how to take a picture with a camera. You can't just like, we're not going to be like, oh, you do this. I mean, there's basics that you need to learn. Dan, yes. And remember what I said first. Clean your damn camera phone lens. Right. <laughs> it's, it's clutch. Get the yeah. thumb grease off your camera phone lens. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, we're actually pretty deep into the show. We're an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, we're an hour and 20. Yeah, well, we, we got... did waffle for like 20 minutes while Pete decided if we were ready to record or not. Oh, that. right. We actually started at um, 4 minutes and 48 seconds, according to my note. So we're at... One. Let's do one more, or do you want to just call? I mean, that's a long episode still, even an hour and 15. Hey, want to roll uh, some questions hey listeners, over? do you guys want to hear more questions? You do? Great. Guys, okay. let's do one more question. Um, this one is from, uh, let's do, this one's really quick. So let's do Matt. He has a question about sales tax. Hey, guys, this is Matt Noble with 4AM Woodcraft. So I got a question about sales tax. I want to sell stuff on my website, um, but having to file sales tax with all the different areas around the country kind of um, makes me uncomfortable. So I was wondering how you guys handle that. Uh, appreciate your help. Love the show. I will start and I will say that we are not qualified to answer that question and that you should seek the advice of a CPA or uh, nope, just a CPA. Dan, what about you? I have a CPA on retainer that I've had for years because I'm old and I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I've had him on retainer takes care since 82. Of... Yes. And he <laughs> takes care of all that stuff for me. So I don't have to worry about it. And it's worth, he's worth every penny. Pete. Like dad said, get a CPA. They're worth every penny. Yup. 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 Cool. Uh, that was a quick one. You want to uh, take one more or two oh, more? Yeah twist my arm let's go yeah. with uh matthew morgan's question on trim routers <laughs> hey guys matt morgan again from matt morgan <laughs> i don't have a name for my woodworking i guess i should do that tonight that's tonight's goal that's what we're gonna shoot for anyway two-part <laughs> question for you first I'm in the market for a trim router, palm router, whatever you guys call it. Um, what would you prefer? A battery, whether it's uh, Milwaukee, DeWalt. I already have Milwaukee M18 stuff, 12 volt stuff. Or would you go electric plug-in style? Uh, like the Bosch is pretty fantastic, I've heard. Second part of the question is I'm looking to upgrade my table saw. I currently have the Bosch, which is a fantastic saw, but I'm thinking about upgrading to, yes, the one that doesn't cut your body parts off. Not sure if I should go with the 1.75 horse or the three horse. Let me know what you think. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Let me know. I'll talk to you. Thanks. Peter. Um, so first of all, your kid's having a blast in the background. I, and I love it. It's great. Um, second of all, the trim router, battery, 100%. You're, if you, especially if you have a router table, you're never going to be using a trim router so long that you need it to be corded. And it's a pain in the butt. Uh, and it's one of those tools that you can just really get into like nice tight spaces and bring it with you if you need to. 
or bring it to the workpiece, and you really don't want a cord. Uh, as for the last question, honestly, if you're already looking at a saw stop, why look at a 1.75? Is that what it was, right? Get the three horsepower. Just, I, I would just say go for that one. If you're going to be looking at it, it's not a huge difference. If you're going to cry, just cry big once and buy once. What about you, Dan? Yeah, if you're already invested in the Milwaukee battery system, get the Milwaukee trim router. It is fantastic little router. Uh, it's one of the better battery battery powered routers on the market. Um, and as far as the saw stop goes, I have the 1.75 horsepower saw stop, and it does everything that I need it, need it to. I cut eight quarter walnut thing on that stuff on that thing all day, and it does fine. But if you can get the three horsepower and you have the 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 wiring already ready to go in your shop, or you have access to it. Get the three horsepower. You won't regret it. You won't regret either one of those saws. I guarantee it. Mike? Mike? Uh, I definitely say cordless uh, for the saw stop. Um, no, okay, no one. All right, that's not very funny. I guess. Cordless okay. saw stop? Um, <laughs> what are you, DeWalt? Uh, no. And get the three horsepower trim router. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad. I'm sorry. No. Uh Cordless well, trim router for sure. Read on something. <laughs> cordless trim router for sure. I have a corded trim router. I literally have not used it in over a year and a half. I just need to sell it um, and tell someone it's cool so they'll buy it because it's not cool. <laughs> it's useless. I don't use it anymore. I keep my i i can my I have the Dewalt and um, I, it's does, great. Does the good to make a trim router? My God, I wish. I didn't need to make all the power tools. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> the the it's. It's great. It's a great little trim router. I mean, I never have any issues with it. I'm not like running three inch flush trim bits with it. So it doesn't need like a ton of power. It just needs to be able to run the chamfer and do the flush trim bits. And it has plenty of power for that. I've it never had it slow do down. Some trimming. Yeah, just needs to do some trimming. Guys, um, I just had a terrifying thought. Oh, God. No, this is a legitimate thought. Okay. If and Mike, you're going to agree with me on this one. You don't know that. It's probably stupid. No. I just had a <laughs> thought of... What if Laguna released a bunch of power, like hand power tools? Like it's good. It would be like, this is your epiphany. No, no, I just like, I had a thought of like, you hard to just released a bunch of like drill saws, everything. I'm like, I would probably replace my DeWalt's with the Laguna's. I would just because I'm like, obviously drinking the Kool-Aid super hard for Laguna. I love tools, but but I would prefer, but. They've kind of been doing a pretty bang up job with the tools they've been putting out i just i'm sorry not to derail the entire podcast i just had an epiphany and then as far as the saw stop goes that 1.75 is trash and anyone that has it is a bozo (laughs) (laughs) no it's a great saw there's uh i had a 1.75 horsepower when i was a little kid and it was really (laughs) (laughs) you just just (laughs) Sorry. Dan, Dan can, you, can that even be 220? No. Can you convert the, it to 220? Yes, I can convert it, sure it to 220. Well, the okay. the one, why haven't you? Listen, the 1.75 was my my last saw was 1.75. I just like yeah, everything said, you made was trash. I literally never, <laughs> ever had that thing slow down on me, ever. Yeah. It was plenty of saw. Um, I will say that I do notice a difference with the three horsepower. Um, it. It is just it is it is different. It is a different feel. It, it's a it's a lot of power. It is a it significant... absolutely is. But the 1.75, I don't, you know, I, you're not gonna be like bummed out that you bought that. No, I don't <laughs> regret gonna do... mine one bit. Even yeah. even with all the jokes. <laughs> with all joke my... it up. All the... joke it up, stupids. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But, uh, all joking aside, it's it it's a great saw. Even a 1.75, they're great. If you can swing it, just Buy once, cry once, but the 1.75 is a phenomenal tool. Yeah, my son has one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he made no, his mallet a, video on it. it right. <laughs> Everyone's got a mallet video. <laughs> I forgot about that joke. <laughs> That's a deep cut. No, uh, it, they're, the 1.75 is a fantastic saw, and um, you wouldn't regret it at all. Um, but you would regret getting a corded trim router, because that's just stupid. Yeah. Um, I do not see any value in them, especially because... That's a tool that you really need to be able to – that's a tool that you're taking to the workpiece. You want it to be as mobile as humanly possible. 
And he so, already said he's invested in the Milwaukee battery system. And it just makes sense. So they, he the said 12. Heard, or, they have a 12 oh, he said 18 and 12. Oh, he did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, you know, I should probably listen better. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's call that for questions. How about that? We yes. got a couple of leftovers that are going to bleed over to next week, but that's, uh, that's okay. And preemptively, we're sorry we didn't play your questions in this podcast. We got them. Play them next week. Yeah, I, I'll actually say who they are. It's Mark. He had a question about drum sanders. And then Matt, who had the question about sales tax, had a question about delivering on time to customers. We're going to roll those over to next week. So uh, we just don't have time, which is a great problem. And everyone, please keep getting your questions in. Man, we just really, really do appreciate it. It really keeps the flow going of the show. We just want the show to be about questions in the community. We do the what's on your bench just to kind of like – joke around and talk about our week yeah. and stuff. But really the centerpiece of the show for us is the questions. So um it was keep... crazy. We 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 really didn't know what the show was gonna be when we first started. We didn't yeah. think it was going to be all questions. No, and that's the best part. Yeah. And making fun of Pete is yeah. really the best part. Yeah. <laughs> Guys tune no, in next or week. Myself, Find out what apparently. they're gonna do to me. <laughs> oh Dan's upset even though we very clearly said it was a great saw. Yeah, um, son loves his. Fun fact: um, the 1.75 horsepower saw stop is made in Poland. That's why it gets made fun of so much. Wow! <laughs> you trying to drag me into this now? Yeah, the 110, stop? 110 factories in Poland. Did the uh, <laughs> did the COVID joke make it into the real show, or was that pre-show? That was well, pre-show. That was pre-show. <laughs> That is gold. Yeah, I forgot All about right. that. That's a good That's one. Hilarious. Seriously though, uh, questions. We really appreciate them. Keep sending them in. Uh, Pete, you want to do the, you want to do the outro? Or you want me to do the outro? No, heck yeah, I want to do it. Good. That's, That's the, only, his thing. the only thing I'm good for. That's yeah. True. You smell intro, great. Outro. Outro. Great beard. <laughs> smell great for my epoxy uh, beard oil. <laughs> Anyways, uh, guys, please keep calling in. I know we keep joking around. We have a lot of voicemails, but please keep calling in. We love voicemails. Uh, we apologize to anyone that's written in a question. We love you. We really do. But these voicemails are so velvety, so smooth. We want to play them first. Uh, but you can also call in, not just record a voice memo and send it over to our email, anotherwoodshopodcast.gmail.com. But you can also send us a voicemail at 754-CALL-AWP or 754-2255-297. And of course, check us out on Patreon. Subscribe if you want to get some Really cool behind-the-scenes content and some goodies as well in the mail. And, uh, of course, last but not least, make sure to check us out on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok for these two sad fools, and YouTube for also these two sad fools because I'm not there yet. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. And, of course, five-star reviews only. I've reached out to Apple. There's a ticket in place. They're going to try to fix it so you can give lower reviews. Right now it's only five stars. Uh, so please, you know, just – submit that and say in the comment that it's two stars cool all right uh you guys got anything <laughs> say in the comment <laughs> in five star right in the five comment. stars this two, two stars, stars. <laughs> you're so mean to polish people <laughs> all right hey well, i mean i guess we should probably wrap this thing up huh yeah i'm tired <laughs> and i gotta go edit some more footage so uh, uh everyone have a great week and thank you so much for listening bye love you long, long time. time bye i love you long time